Hey, and a very warm welcome to the Into the Light Web podcast with me, your hostess, Joanna Hunter, metaphysical teacher, spiritual life and business coach, published author, and the high priestess of the Light Web, a spiritual technology that will change your life. This is the place to be to talk everything under the Light Web from consciousness, relationships to money to spiritual business and everything in between. Hi, and a warm welcome to the Into the Light Web podcast with me, your hostess, Joanna Hunter. And today I am joined by the lovely Anita Marshall. Come and say hi, Anita, and tell people what it is that you do in the world. Hi, Joanna. Lovely to be here. So thank you for inviting me to talk. I'm a spiritual life coach and energy healer, and I particularly um, work with people who want to align with purpose. So really finding and discovering what their purpose is at a soul level and starting that journey and really starting to work and live it. So that's my passion. Amazing, amazing. So you've been a client of mine for uh, a while now. Tell us how you first jumped into my world, if you can remember way back when. (laughs) Well, I first connected with you in one of the Facebook groups and um, I actually thought it was just with your oracle card course uh you had the little mini oracle card course and i uh love oracle cards i am addicted to them and uh, so and i was like toying with the idea of creating my own so i started with that and then obviously that got me into your world even fuller and i started listening to everything that you were sharing and i was like goodness that makes total sense and I really recognized it and it was just a real expansion that happened and so then I um, signed up for your divine planning and abundant profits which uh, because though I was doing the uh, my work the holistic work the spiritual work I was just kind of there was something that was still just missing and I I needed I needed that bringing in and everything you were doing was just making total sense and it just felt so right and aligned so that's how I started really moving oh, I love it I love it so we've been on a bit of a journey together and um during our time together you kind of shifted and pivoted as well in what you're doing and I feel like you're so much squeaky clean and clearer on what it is that you're offering people now and and things like that as well talk talk us through that journey a little bit because I think a lot of people are sometimes very frightened to sort of pivot a little bit or go deeper into what they're doing or like just hone it in to make it more them you know yeah I think it was you know I I had that element of being a little bit afraid of my spiritual side I was really connected to it but there was that little bit of still hiding it. So okay. I, so I was, you know, initially it was like um, I tried to keep a little bit more mainstreamy and not show up in that way. And also I'd come back, I'd come from initially IT corporate environment and moved into the spiritual, but I was still, not, I don't think I was feel, fully embracing it, uh, there was that um I think we did uh, the witch wound and things like that we've done those yeah. and it was like when I started doing that through the, uh, the light whip healing the witch wound it was like everything just released that of holding and I was more willing then to right go in and say actually this is who I am and fully Amazing. embrace the energy of who I was and what I was really being called to do and that's you know that's where I'm now so That's huge. I think so many people are going to resonate with that coming from that corporate background, because we have a lot of ladies in our world that have kind of come from that corporate background where the woo stuff is kind of frowned upon. It's like, hmm, like this, like it's not even real or it's like it's not even a real thing. And and so what we end up doing is towing this sort of false line in a way because it's not really who we are because we've evolved and expanded beyond that. But at the same time, that conditioning of that corporate world is strong. So we're trying to do business properly, right? Like 
I do the marketing in the quite a masculine way, I think, sometimes as well. And that's what often happens. Um, and, you know, we're trying to do that business in such a proper way. And instead of doing it in a way that feels good and feels effortless and flows from us. Um, and I think a lot of people are probably really resonating with that. Tell us a little bit more about that transition for you, because obviously the witch wound, going through that healing, going through that and realizing, ah, this is me. It's probably like a little checklist of like realizing all the places where you were shrinking because of that fear of persecution, because that's a big thing, I think. And it's probably the, one of the big reasons why you sort of hid some of the spiritual stuff in a way, like kept it on the down low rather than being out there and being like, hey, this is who I am. So tell us a little bit about that, making those shifts for yourself. Yeah, I think it was like, I didn't even... Re- I, I didn't even realize I was initially doing it. That was the that was the big thing. So, but yeah, it was very masculine. I was trying to follow logic and I wasn't really following my heart. And I, you know, at my heart, I knew who I wanted to serve and what I wanted to do, but I, I just couldn't translate that into the outer world because obviously the kind of the wounding was there and the fears and also all that conditioning, the, the logical side, from the corporate yeah. that you have to have this fixed structure and you have to do it in this order and this way etc and I was really you know that was still kind of playing out and then um so I didn't even use the I didn't even say to people I did energy healing that was you know how it, right, it was, okay so I even was struggling with that even though I was you know I was a rake you know reiki um I was reiki trained and I'd done energy healing modalities when it actually came to saying the words what I did I still kept it down oh I'm a life coach and you know that was it I didn't even use the word spiritual life coach I would just because it was just such a struggle and then and then when I did the um that healing it was like okay I'm going to and I actually then went straight afterwards I actually went out onto my Facebook page I added energy healer to the end uh, to end of things I put spiritual life coach in there and um and really started to own it so it was that real shift but it was that work that I had to do on myself and now I'm very comfortable with it I love that you said something there that really resonated you owned it and I think this is something that is so underplayed in business you know Skylar has this beautiful teaching of either you own the energy or the energy owns you right and if you want to be in charge and you want to be in control of your own life you have to learn how to own the energy right like the energy that is you um and there you were not owning the energy and it has a negative effect effect on our businesses it has a negative effect on our lives when we're not owning the energy because the energy is kind of owning us uh we're shrinking our light we're dimming ourselves down we're calling ourselves a life coach when we're like so much more um all of those things and I recognize that behavior myself haven't been through all of that myself um what did that feel like stepping in and changing those titles and stepping into that ownership of and how has that impacted and changed your business as a result um well firstly it it felt suddenly very expansive I think you know we we do a lot of work when we've been doing when I've been learning with you and that we talk about the contracted you know the lack state versus yeah. that very expansive state and as soon as I did that I felt like I moved out of that contracted state because Beautiful. when I was when I was you know in fear it was contracting me and then it was having sure. that effect on my business so and it was like it was really frustrating because my business wasn't growing as I wanted it to. Um, so and I wasn't really showing up. I was showing up, but I wasn't showing up. You were like, doing all the things, but you weren't <laughs> showing up in the fullness and the owning of your energy. Right. So you were yeah. like showing up, but still on the down low. Yeah. It was like it. I had that invisible cloak on. So I was doing it, but 
if people couldn't see it, it was like there was an invisible cloak between. It was like you were them. doing the work, and then you were like shouting into the abyss, like "Hello, is yeah. there anyone there?" You know, and it's yeah. that, and it is frustrating because you're doing it, you're doing the work, you're doing all the things, and you're probably doing all the things right, but it's that little piece of ownership missing. Yeah. That little piece that's such a piece of like saying, no, this is who I am, being proud of that and really owning it. And it switches the energy, doesn't it? Because we've got that fear, right? Like of of like, what if the muggles find out that like I'm actually really quite like witchy woo? And so we're a bit like, oh, like this, right? But the minute that we take that ownership and say, I am witchy woo, I'm, I'm a little bit of a magic lady here. The moment we step into that, there's such a power in that of like the ability for others to sort of diminish our light or diminish us in any way, shape or form when we're owning the energy. It's like, it's like, no, nah, mate, we're not yeah. available for that. <laughs> totally. And it was, it was, and it was like when I would, when people were, talking to me about what I did or inquiring about working with me it was like I go okay we will be and you know I started really saying expect our sessions to include energy healing expect them to be very much from the soul perspective very much from the spiritual and that and I, I was really clear then and then of course I got clearer with my messaging what I was saying I was also confident in what I was doing. So, and I stopped trying to please everybody. I think that was the other thing was I stopped trying to get, you know, please everybody and say yes to everybody. And if they said, you know, if they weren't like wanting that spirit, more spiritual side and they, you know, they're connected from that life coaching, like going, okay, well, then um, hold on. And that's that's okay to be like that, like just move along. Um I think it's such a liberating place um, for an entrepreneur, a spiritual entrepreneur to get to that place where they realize I'm not going to please all of the people all of the time. And I'm actually not here to do that job. I'm actually here for the people who are ready for the magic that I have, as opposed to, and it's like, it's a discernment. It's not exclusion. It's not excluding people. It's a discernment of saying, I'm actually not here for like, the great unwashed I'm here for a subsection of society not all of society um and it's such a beautiful place so as you're building what I'm feeling and what I'm getting a sense of from this conversation is that you're building this inner strength in in your work and there's and it's probably really really helping you to tap into your soul's purpose which is in turn what you're helping other people with right yes yeah, most definitely. I think um, I've, I've spent, I was, you know, I was a very sensitive child and everything. So I, you know, I had, I kind of struggled with that. So um, that's been part of the journey is to overcome that. And I know that's a soul level challenge and that, but. It but also then, as well, maybe embrace some of those sensitivities yeah. as well, right? Because in your ownership of your more empathic abilities and your spiritual abilities it's also owning that energy as well and not just overcoming it but owning it yeah it wasn't crushing it it wasn't it was just transmuting it into using it in the positive sense yes. rather than letting it like letting it control me letting it be absolutely um, beautiful so it, and now it's like uh when we did the when I was doing the light web training it was like that sensitivity was used to kind of really pick up on what was going off for my clients and things like that. And it, it has, it's just, as I started to own the energy more and more and own everything about it, it has just transitioned my sessions and things. I've just found there's been a real up level happen. I, I love that. So you did our Lightbringer training, which is the follow on from Lightweb. Um, how did you enjoy that training? Did you love the energy tracking? I think that's a favorite for people. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that was I think that was a real awakener to adding that real extra uh, to my sessions and things. What I did, it was like, oh, OK, 
Um, and I love the tracking of the energy. That was just a beautiful. It's such a powerful like tool when you understand that what people are literally presenting with on the surface is rarely the big issue at the base of things and learning how to track to the actual root cause is so huge um and I can imagine that for the work that you do and helping people with their soul purpose you know it's kind of funny because probably some people come and they're looking for their soul purpose and actually now you probably find that you're maybe directing them not to be looking at the soul purpose because that was just the thing that presented on the top and actually there's another underlying thing that might affect like their confidence or feeling good enough or other energies yeah. underneath which then translates into them stepping deeper into their own kind of purpose as well it's beautiful work and uh, it's been lovely to see your business sort of go from strength to strength and for you to step into more of your personal power which I think is I had a, a conversation this morning about circumstantial power versus personal power um and you know the the kind of piece of that conversation that I want to share in this conversation is that often what we do is we wait for the circumstances to line up and then we get to be powerful but when we start to cultivate which is what you have done on the journey that we've been together you've started to cultivate your own personal power the circumstances can be whatever but we still get to be powerful and I think that's one of them you know that's one of the things that's really really powerful in stepping in and doing that deep inner soul work which you now do for other people as well which is amazing yeah most definitely I think that's it it is it has been that stepping into the personal power and that's that has been what really has made the change it's as you say we were talked about the ownership the personal power and things like that and stop you know stopping all the, just waiting for the circumstances to be right and things I think a lot of people do that in in business don't we I mean you're a mama I'm a mama like we have a lot of circumstances <laughs> right children no. are not always well 24 7 who knew and there's stuff going on and family stuff and all the things right like and so it often you know I remember sort of in the early days of, of my business you know all of that would be could be devastating and crushing to my business in a way because I, it affected me so much and so I rode that like roller coaster of life and that roller coaster of business but then when I learned to kind of like be on a more even keel and be like more in my own personal power I started to develop a kind of no matter what attitude which I think a lot of people they're a bit frightened of that actually because they think that that means that they're going to be like a mean person or something but it just means that if I set my mind on something it's going to happen no matter what and like the circumstances are going to have to just be the circumstances that are around it because that is my decision that I have made um, and I will roll with the circumstances whereas before I used to always wait for the circumstances and that's a big thing that I've seen in your transformation um, of you like stepping into your personal power I feel much more from you now the sense of I'm doing it no matter what um, you know kids hobby life all the things they still get to be there they still get to do their stuff but they're no longer got that hold over whether you get to be successful or not yeah and I think it, the other thing is it's like the stories we end up telling ourselves it's like I can't you know I was like well I've got two two young kids you know I can't you know the lack of, it was that lack of kind of energy I don't have enough time to make a I don't have enough time I you like all the lack stories right yes and all the and then you know something would happen and they would be poorly as you say those you know the poorly the school closed for a day and something like that and you just like go and you tell yourself you know oh you know all the stories then you would tell yourself about it or you'd fall into that little victim mindset you know <laughs> all all of that and that was you know that was where I would keep going in and I think that was why I was creating also for a while I had that up down up down up down going off because I would be going and in, into it but once I started collecting my going into my personal power once I started really saying okay this is where I'm focused on I'm staying in there and you know life happens 
It but, is, and it's always, and here's the thing, it's always going to happen, right? There's never going to be a good time for your business. Like never, like yeah. the time is now and what you got to roll with what you got now, because if yeah. we don't, it's, you're going to be sat waiting for an awfully long time for the right time, right? And it's that, it's that piece where we learn, one, once we learn that piece and that piece clicks, then it's like, then we're really off to the races, right? Like now we're really doing it. Now we're really like, it's, and it is. And, and if something big comes up, like we lead ourselves through it and we say, well, I can't do this or well, we're going to just go ahead and it'll be what it'll be. And we don't put the pressure on ourselves. Um, and it is about that self-leadership of like being able to be the one that leads ourselves through the situations, right? Because stuff happens and we got to learn to roll with it. Um, and I love that. How is that transmuted into your, with working with your clients and things like that? Do you feel a lot more at ease and confidence now with whatever life is throwing at you? Uh, because I know for you, like, um, and I think so many people can relate to this, but for you, a big victimizer of you was time, right? Like the story was always, I don't have enough hours in the day. There isn't enough time. I don't have the time to do the marketing. I don't have the time to do a lot of things, right? But then we begin to realize like it is just a story and we yeah. begin to dismantle the story and life can start to change. Yeah, it was like, you know, I'm not enough time. I, there was a lot of not enough, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing was, you know, I, as a result of that, I told myself also the story, I'm not, I'm not good enough. You know, every time it didn't, every th time something happened, it was like, oh, I'm not good enough as well. So I had, I'm not enough time and I'm not good enough. And I, it was like- it was like a double whammy, right? A like double whammy. a double whammy of not enough. Yeah. And it was that kind of real lack, not enough energy going off. And of course that was reflecting in the result. But then once I kind of cleared that, once I realized that, then of course I expanded. As a result, what I could give and do for my clients Kind of, it's, it's like what you do for yourself then magnifies what you do with your clients it's like it's not just that at the same level it makes a difference totally. multifold yeah and it's I love like it. yeah isn't it funny because like like here's the thing that pickles my brain right like on all of the teachings of Skylar and things like that is that that fear state does contract our energy but it also contracts our capacity for what we can do we yeah. change the story the energy expands and suddenly in the same amount of time we can suddenly work freaking miracles it's like it pickles my brain because I'm like the the amount of time that I have has not changed and yet what I can accomplish in the time that I have now in the ease, joy and flow with zero stress is like a million times of what I could have accomplished while I was so attached to like the pearl little me stories of I haven't got enough and the not enough stories and all the things when I was really attached to those stories. Life was hard. Life was a struggle. It was the pushing the boulder up the hill. And then what pickles my brain is the time that I have has not changed and yet somehow I accomplish so much more yeah well it, it, to be honest the time has probably even got less for me in some ways because I've got somehow amongst all of this like two kids I decided to get up we decided to have a family to get a puppy and you know and a dog and so now it's like dog walks and everything like that and it's like um so but it has a you know I didn't go oh there's, you know, not enough time. It's like, oh, look, I've got extra time because I, you know, on the dog walk, so I might listen to podcasts and things like that. Yeah, and, well, like and, so you, epic. Yeah. And, you know, I'm out in nature, which is absolutely brilliant. A for, big, a big uh, thing for you, yes. Yes, it's a really, really, really important for oh, me. It, it encourages so me out more. So it was suddenly, it was like that, that with that, big shift as well it's like the way I viewed it so again it came back down to those kinds of stories we're telling ourselves and things but because it could easily be like oh god now we've got a puppy now we've got to do walks and now we've got to do and we could easily get into that story that's going to diminish but there's always like there's always 
a light way. There's always a way for the energy to be lighter. And it's like, hey, now it's opportunities to tap into my education and be listening to podcasts and be out in nature, which I know does such wonders for my energy and like all of those things. And and of course, like that, it's the attitude really, isn't it? It's like an attitude shift as we begin to shift that attitude. I remember once um, Skylar saying attitudes are contagious is yours worth catching? And at the time, mine was not worth catching. <laughs> and I thought, God, I wouldn't wish out my worst enemy, you know, because that I didn't have a good attitude at that point in time. And But that was the motivation of realizing, how can I shift my attitude to being more helpful to me? How can I shift my attitude to go from this, I can't attitude or not enough attitude into the attitude of, abundance and that attitude because abundance is an attitude it's it's like that expansion is an attitude of like just feeling and what you do is that attitude changes the lenses by which you view life from so you know from the older you can even see probably yourself from that older attitude that you had getting a dog would have been like oh one more thing to do from that attitude but from the other attitude like this is a golden opportunity for lots of really cool stuff <laughs> yeah. um abundance attitude and it's such a difference um I love that I love what a journey you've been on um yeah. well, tell think- us about how it's unfolding in your business now right so um yeah I you know I've expanded the way I work with clients and you know it's like Previously, I'd be, I'd probably be quite nervous, you know, I was really initially, uh, even though I was doing country, nervous to offer bigger packages and things like that. So, um, and I would, you know, I would, I kind of hold back and things, but now it's like the, com- I have the confidence to know that I can take somebody from this point and to the point they need to get to. And I think that could also come from actually experiencing coaching, you know, through yourself and that. I've noticed, you know, once I experienced it, because we, when we're in it, when we're in it ourselves, it's sometimes hard to see the wood for the trees. You know, yes. we, really, we can't really see it until it's, uh, you know, it's reflected back to it through a coach mm. or somebody uh, bringing that into our awareness. And you brought it, you know, to the work we did, you brought it into my awareness what I was doing and it's like okay now I've expanded I can also and it's like with my clients it's like I can really bring them into that awareness state and really see it and not just see where you know at the beginning it was like all about purpose you know but purpose is so much bigger and it's like helping them see where they're actually sabotaging themselves and helping them clear that those yeah. patterns of energy those patterns and I love that, was, that you know I've always been that has always been one of my gifts is being able to see the patterns and things that everything yes. that is and I think that's what you know even when I was in corporate that was what I was doing I could I was really really looking good at, at the patterns seeing the yeah. patterns and seeing the connections and really bringing it all together and you know that was something I did even in the the mundane muggly kind of <laughs> in the world yeah exactly (laughs) but this is the funny thing isn't it like our superpowers in the spiritual world are often the same superpowers that we were using in the sort of muggle world but we weren't tapping into the fullness and the breadth of that superpower in the muggly world we were really tapping into that um superpower you know, that's when it really comes into the own, when we start owning the spiritual aspect of it. And we can really start to, it's like, it's like that superpower grows arms and legs and gets even bigger. Um, and it's funny how you were using that in, in the corporate world. And, and yet it's been a gift that's been really, like it's a gift that keeps on giving, right? In your kind of spiritual life now. Yeah. Well, I love coaching, it. I really, it's like a tapestry. And I, I, yeah. you know, I can see how they all interweave and I can feel through the energies and that I feel how it's all interweaving and how it's all coming together. And, you know, and then that's what I can do with the clients. It's like that energy. Yeah. 
Okay. And that's it. I mean, rarely what people come with and present with on the surface is rarely like the root cause. The root cause can be sometimes the root cause are the weirdest things. You know, it can be a throwaway comment from one of your parents when you were like three or four years of age. And suddenly that just had this pattern of energy that just kept playing out. Um, you know, like I've heard, I've had clients that said like, um, you know, like a parent had said to them, like, oh, you better marry rich. Uh, meaning that the only way that they could have money in the future was if they had a, like a good, you know, because it was a very much a girl thing that they said could girls, right? Like if you yeah. were to have money in the future, you had to marry well. And then that thing, you know, like that plays out as a sabotaging business, like later on. And then on the surface, they're like, I don't seem to be able to attract clients. And and it's like that because what they're, they're trying not to disappoint their parent and their parent basically told them in not in so many words but told them that the only way that they were going to have money was if they married rich and so the thing to like get their parents approval would be to be like marry well and then if they don't do that and they build a business instead it's like they're going against what we're hardwired to go you know to be in alignment with so yeah it's it's so fascinating I love it one of the things that I picked up on there as well was like the abundance consciousness as well of like um of offering those larger packages and I think that that's very much part of lack consciousness is that lack consciousness um we're quite often quite aware of the money in lack consciousness usually the lack of money but we're also afraid of offering the package that will do the work the justice because yeah. we think, oh, but that's a lot of money for that person. And we're like, oh, like this. So we are hold back because we're in lack consciousness. But then when we move into an abundance consciousness, we're able to be in this like very abundant space within ourselves and be able to hold a more abundant space for our clients. And we then look at the work and we say, well, what would honor the work? And it's yeah. like, you know, and and it's so logic as well at the same time, because we're like, we know we're not going to erase 20 years of conditioning in an hour session. Like, yeah. we're good, but we're not that good. Right. So we're like, we need to have we need to, you know, like sometimes these things need space to percolate and a three month container, or a six month container is the space that would give that person the opportunity to really percolate through that and really have the teachings, have the, the healing sessions really land and to have that abundance of time. And I think, you know, that's one of the the things. And it's one of the reasons why I give lifetime access in some of my courses, because I just want to be able to give that abundance of time because I know that, you know, people are coming at different levels and stages. Some people have got little itty bitty problems that they don't take a lot to shift. And then other people have got habitual ways of thinking that they have thought in a long time. Um, and that's a lot to shift. And I love that you've made that shift of being able to offer and honor your work in a deeper level than ever before of being able to really offer the work that honors the work yeah most definitely and I have to say all due credit to the you know doing the light web healer uh, coaching and healing because that was I think that was the extra shift I'd done I'd done the the healing you know eye level but then it just took it to that next level so it did create Beautiful. that um, oh I love hearing that that makes me so happy but it is it's such a beautiful journey and I mean it's also as well it's I think sometimes as healing, it's a very hard industry to value, right? Because it's so intangible. Like what yes. is healing for one person may not be healing for another person. And so it's such an individual process. Like everybody that goes through the healing process will experience that unique to them. And um, when you are building a website, for instance, it's easy, right? Like you say, okay, how many pages do you want to have your website? And they say, I'd like four pages and great. And like, and you go ahead and you build the website for them. And then it's like, bosh, bosh, bosh. And there's a finished product at the end of it. With the healing journey, so much of it is operating in the intangible world. So, you know, like you're going to feel better. Okay, well, that means nothing to me. <laughs> you know, as a person, it's like, what does that mean? Um, you know, and so it's quite a difficult thing, I feel sometimes to communicate. Um, 
you know, what that means and, and being able to step into the power of that. But here's the thing, you know, a website after a few years, you're going to need to change it, right? The healing that we offer is a permanent solution. You know, it is a thing that will pay dividends in years to come of like, you know, I think of my own healing journey and I think of like everything that I've been through and like how easily I used to be triggered. In fact, I was talking about that on the transmission of light recently and how easily I was triggered and like how now people really have to get up very early in the morning to like push one of my buttons because they're just, there's just not the buttons to push that there was in the past. And it's such a powerful thing but we, you know, but it has such long-term ramifications. Um, and I think that's one of the beautiful things within a healing journey of really learning to heal and transform your life. It is, it's, you know, it's for life. It's not, oh, this will make you feel better in the interim. And then, you know, it's like a little band-aid. And then, you know, once the band-aid is away, you're back to being in pain again. Like this is, it is a cure, really, in a way. Um, Most definitely. And I think also you don't even realise that it, you know, when you're healing it in one area, you actually, there's been other areas of your life that have been influenced by it. And yes. it, and then it had this knock-on effect. So, um, you know, for me, it's like it's improved relationships and things like that by doing this work. And that's what I've seen with, you know, my clients as well, it's like they come, as you say, they come in with one idea and we might be healing and doing the work in that area. Absolutely. But then they'll come back and they'll, they'll say, you'll, you know, and they'll say, you never guess what, you know. Favourite emails is, ever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, you know, this has happened, this has happened and this has happened. And you go, yeah, yeah, you've, you've changed, you've raised your energy vibrations, you've changed the, you've unhooked those triggers and things like that so no, then people aren't pushing the buttons you've expanded your energy you're in the higher vibrational energy so look you're attracting you're attracting, you're attracting higher vibrational stuff right yeah attracting it's like higher really vibration. that simple and at the same time it's so profound and the yes. thing is once you've locked in a new vibration that's you like that vibration is locked in it's not you like you're not yeah, you might visit lower frequencies now and again, but they're just not your, it's not the frequency you're no, you're no longer operating on that frequency. So although you might have a bad day and you feel like I feel pants today, it's a visit, not a pitching of a tent and living there anymore. Yeah. And you're aware of it as well. So you go, oh, actually, I'm, because that's a lot of the thing is that initially, you know, work before you do the work and before you um, heal it it's like you're it's operating outside of awareness you're outside of awareness or you you're seeing it as an external thing and then yeah, it, yeah. then it's like now if anything does happen and it's like not quite going to plan or whatever or the idea I'll have a look and I'll have a check in and I go and bring it back into awareness where you know where have I dipped into it what area yeah. have I dipped into that energy Oh, those, and sometimes those. when weird stuff happens for me now, I'm like, I realize that like, oh, I see you. It's energetic protection. Like I'm totally being protected right now. Whereas before, if something didn't go my way, it would be immediately mean that either I wasn't enough or the world was against me. Right. Yeah. And like yeah. now I'm like, I'm totally like I had a really weird incident recently um, somebody sent me a message. I replied to them. Then they sent me another message. And the message wasn't very kind, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it basically said that they would have thought that I would have responded to this message. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so then I went and checked and my original message didn't send, right? So I write this big, long message. I mean, I literally, I'm so sorry. My original message didn't send. There's nothing I can do about that after the fact. And I went in to like literally answer the original message. And then I went in to like a, write a few more things. Sent the message. Message didn't send. A second time. 
Like how does that even happen on like Facebook, right? Like twice, not once, but twice the same thing happened. So I went back and I was like, do I rewrite the message and do I do I try again? And then I just reread the the message that they had said and they were like, they'd finished it with this comment of like, thank you for showing me who you are. And I thought, you know what? I actually realized I don't have space and capacity for people like this. And and you know what? It sounds to me like this person has got a lot going on for them and I have love and I have compassion for that but that does not give them the right to speak to another human being in a negative way. And I thought, I really think what's happened here twice, not once, is energetic protection. Because Mm -hmm. is this person a person that's really available for a conversation? Or is this the person that literally just wanted an argument? And I'm not available for arguments. I'm available for conversations and discussion, but not arguments. And and I thought, why, you know, like this, whereas in the past, if a whole message after I'd written it and delete it, I'd be like, ah, oh, F my life. Yeah. <laughs> but this time I was like, I see you spirit, you've got my back. It's okay. And I was able to just walk away from it and be like, okay, if she wants, if that person wants to think that way about me, they are welcome. That's okay. Uh, I'm good. I, because I know who I am. And I don't need the outside approval of others. And it's all it's all good for me. And um, you know, and I have inner peace at that, and I can be totally at peace with that. Whereas I think something like that in in the past would have like completely rocked me um and upset me terribly. I would have been upset that the original message didn't send. I would have overthought the crap out of that then I would have been upset at their response. <laughs> then, do you know what I mean? It would just be like this laundry list of being upset. And, and now I'm like, now I can just walk away from the whole instant and be like, you know what? I'm all right. I'm good here. I'm all good here. <laughs> and that's that's part of the inner peace, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's part of being in your own power as well. You know, it's like that idea because, you know, it's like um, other people's opinion define your other people's opinions are what makes your value, you know, and you take it yes. from external and rather than internal power. Yes. Yes. That coming back to that. So it's an external rather than an internal. And when it's because once we own it, once it's internal, then nothing can shake no one it. Can take it from us. No, it's like an unshakable core. Yeah. Um, I love the word like unfuckable. You literally become unfuckable with like no one can really mess with you. Um, And it's such a glorious place to be when we're owning our energy. And, you know, we're not riding the seven seas of emotions uh, on a daily basis. And it's such beautiful work that you do for people to get people to that place of, um, not knowing you know getting people to that place of where they're not riding the seven seas of emotions you know and and going up the highs and the lows constantly that their emotional state starts to become more constant as opposed to it just being constantly bombarded and affected by outside circumstances yeah Um, that's what you know that's the work I'm kind of doing is like really reconnecting people with who they are right because once we're connected with who we are you know we are it's our core it's really rooting ourselves in ourselves and it stops the influences of the external so you know that's what purpose is to me is re bringing people back home to who they really are at that deep level and reconnecting with them that is I love know, that and you've got some really unique tools in your toolbox. We mentioned the Lightbringer tools and the Lightbringer healing models that you have, but you, obviously you're trained in Reiki, but you're also trained in, in other models as well. So tell us a little bit about the tools that are in your toolbox. Okay, so my next, my biggest one that I use, and it's the foundation of everything I do, is something called Soul Plan. So uh, Soul Plan is where we look at the energies that form your life purpose and um, it's what who you're born to be so when I do look at somebody's soul plan I can see their challenges 
their soul gifts as well as their soul level goals and that really helps bring people back into awareness helps bring them back to who they are and we can also look at where all those where some of the healing needs to take place and identify use that as an identification um there so Tell that me is- about my soul plan if anybody's listening to this and they're like soul plan what like what is this so it uses your name and your birthday isn't that right it uses your birth name so the vibrations of our birth names so it is actually an ancient system it actually comes from some of the hebrew gematria and um, texts um so that was where it originated from in the zephyr extra it was then brought um, and channeled and expanded by both Frank Alper and the modernized version of Blue Marsden, who I actually trained with and became one of his first his first teachers of the Soul Plan system. So I've been a teacher now of it for 12 years. So I've been teaching it for 12 years and using it for the last 14. Um, and what it does is our birth name, it holds a vibrational energy. And that vibrational energy influences our reality, our experience. It's just like a plane has its little unique beacon and it beacons out and that causes other planes and things. Yeah, absolutely. It's got that frequency and that frequency sent out into the universe, kind of paving the way for us, attracting like frequencies to it. Yeah. So that's what it does. It attracts, you know, it tracks or moves people in and out of your space to help create the growth and that's what the soul's all about the soul is about growth it comes here to experience growth through life lessons you know and and that's what we do we have the human life but our soul has that very expanded eternal view of things and it's just wanting to gather all that experience and and it does that through our human life and all those experiences that we have good and you know the difficult ones as well as the and, uh, let's not talk about those experiences yeah. <laughs> let's never mention them again <laughs> all of that <laughs> yeah so um yeah so soul plan is um what I use under you know for coaching and um with my coaching and the healing and um, obviously, as I say, I teach that as well. So um, it's like bringing the next generation, uh, you know, bringing it out around the world, because I think there is a we are now at that point where there's a real shift and more people are ready to move in and into that very expansive energy to create change in the world, to create and I think they're more open and available for the mysticism of some of these models and things like that, right? It's a lot more mainstream. I think with the rise of meditation and yoga um, Mm -hmm. and things like that, we have this real understanding of the body-soul connection, especially with things like yoga, which really works not just on our moving our bodies as nice exercise, but also as well connecting those movements to our minds and to our spirit as well, which I think is such a a big thing because we're so conditioned in the physical world that if you can see it, touch it, taste it, it must be real. And anything that doesn't fall into those categories, aka the unseen world, isn't somehow real. And, And yet we are so governed by the unseen world. We're so governed by energy. Um, you know, we can all listen to a radio station, but have you ever seen a radio wave? You know, they're whizzing through the air all the time. Thousands of radio stations are literally whizzing past your head right now. And yet none of us have seen them. And yet we all can enjoy a radio station if we have the right equipment. Um, And I think, you know, so the unseen energy, we know how powerful it is. And I think the world's ready to start embracing that unseen energy. And I love that you've got, you know, your soul plan as a kind of foundation and giving that and then whatever is coming up in that soul plan is where you can dive into the tools like the light web tools of the healing models and the tracking of energy and the clearing models that we use and clearing that energy for someone um, that might be a little bit on the funky side of life and perhaps producing the results that they are not enjoying in their lives. Yeah, most definitely. And yeah, it is. It's, and I love how light web has molded in with all the, you know, it, 
works so well with uh, Soul Plan. Um, I also had some other healing modalities that I used, um, Atlantean paddles and soul transformation therapy. And it's all blended in so powerfully and beautifully now. So um, I love, you know, and I love using it. Um, and even as I'm using the Atlantean paddles and things, I sort of like, you know, the light web is coming in and it's like, oh, OK. And it's giving that extra element to it. Dimension. Yeah. I I don't know if you, have you ever seen an Atlantean paddle? I've got to well, just show bring, you. Bring one out because now that you mentioned it, I, think, I have seen them, but I, I feel like people would like to see them. Yes. So um, You have to be on YouTube to be seeing, catching Oh, them. yes. You, so get you have are, to be on YouTube. So this is like, we've got the purple paddle. And let me just... Um, Beautiful. Uh, you know, we have it. There's uh, seven paddles. So these... Um, these paddles and that so um, and you work with them in the energy system and I can do those you know I can do my business is entirely online so I work entirely online but these transmute through uh, transmit through the uh, energy space and I get asked that all the time as somebody who works entirely pretty much online now like 100% online people are like does the energy work does it transfer does it do does it ever? Of course it does. But one of the things that always I always share with people when they say that is that scientists have worked out that if we remove the space between molecules, everything on our planet, everybody on our planet, all things would actually fit into the size of a matchbox. That's unbelievable. Um, I know it's unbelievable, right? Like, because like if you remove the space between molecules of everything on the planet and everyone on the planet, everything would actually fit into the space of a matchbox. So it really blows my mind because in my mind, then I just think I'm only ever the distance of a matchbox between someone. Like if they are at the furthest away point, they're only ever on the other side of a matchbox. And that to me in my own mind feels so teeny tiny wee that. I'm like, I've got this, <laughs> you know, and it's such a powerful thing, but it shows you that, you know, the space between molecules has, you know, gives us this world that we feel like we can be on the other side of the world and it feels like it's so far. I mean, I remember traveling to Bali and it being like 24 hours of flying, right? And we think it's so far and yet, you know, the truth of the matter is if we could figure out a way to remove the space between molecules, we'd suddenly all fit into a little matchbox, including the entire planet. Yeah. Uh, it's insane. It is. <laughs> but yeah, people are, also people accept that an email can get across the world in seconds. Yet, <laughs> you know, sometimes the question whether uh, why and it's just yeah, they're like will the energy get to me that's something that I get you know like this and I mean obviously you've been in the temple and you've been in our healing sessions our like web healing sessions you do like web healing yourself like you know how powerful that is and does it get to you yeah most <laughs> definitely <does>. yeah <laughs> it, but it is that I think that's the first part is you have to experience it I think for absolutely absolutely once they experience it it just make it just kind of like oh yes but sometimes it's just overcoming a little bit of the mind and things but when, as I say when we put it down into some of the logical things that we accept every day in our life then it's, it's not that much of a leap to say okay look it's you know it's just energy in the you know it is energy we we work with energy Sometimes it just seems a little bit more tangible and sometimes yeah. it's a little less it. tangible. I love it. So tell it, Anita, thank you so much for coming in today and having a chat about your journey and letting us know about soul plan and all of the things. How can somebody, if somebody's been listening to this and thinking I could be doing one of those soul plan readings or I could be doing with some light web healing or working with those Atlantean paddles, how can they get in touch with you? Where do you hang out on the internet? Right. So obviously I have my website, so they can find me at anitadmarshall.com. So I've got the D in there, so anitadmarshall.com. 
And you can also find me, my main place is on Facebook. So I have a Facebook page, uh, which is Anita D. Marshall, spiritual life coach and energy healer. So they can find me there. Magic. No time yeah. owning the spiritual life coach and energy healer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well um, earned. You've been on a big journey with it. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that we link all of the links below this episode or near this episode so that you can go and check out Anita. And thank you so, so much for joining us and uh, having this conversation with us. I feel like we've been on a journey from lack consciousness to abundance consciousness in today's um, call and podcast. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think that has, that has definitely been the journey that I have taken through being connected with you and doing this journey and coming into my own purpose from, you know, from the corporate, from the health issues that I had which I don't think we I didn't mention but anyway <laughs> yeah from that place that all that lack place and then taking this journey and coming to where I am and doing what I'm uh, doing that's been extraordinary absolutely amazing thank you so much for joining us you're welcome thank you for inviting me